Welcome to the Living Healthy Podcast, a podcast dedicated to health, fitness, exercise, medicine, diet, nutrition, as well as eating clean, organic, and non-GMO foods. Let's live the journey through weight loss, weight management, and accomplishing goals. I'm your host, Eddie Randall. Thank you for tuning in to Season 3, Episode 11 of the Living Healthy Podcast. Your continued listening and your continued support are greatly appreciated. I apologize for getting this episode out a little late. I'm working on numerous projects, um, including those which will promote the podcast. With God's help, I will continue to produce excellent content uh, with along with your support. Thank you for listening. And please feel free to check out the latest merchandise at the Living Healthy Podcast Store. The link is in the description of the podcast. Breast cancer is a plight on women, and it is the second leading cause of death for women. Gender, genetics, and exposure to certain chemicals make this danger all too common. On top of that, depending on when it is detected, is literally the difference between life and death. According to BreastCancer.org, one out of every eight women will develop invasive breast cancer in the United States. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and raising awareness bolsters prevention and detection. Awareness also supports those who are fighting it, and awareness honors those who have beaten it. In tonight's podcast, I'll be discussing the topic of breast cancer. Tonight's podcast is entitled Breast Cancer Awareness, Genetics, Daily Life, and Prevention. Awareness. Breast cancer is a worldwide problem, and with just under 4 billion people on the planet being women, half of the world's population is at risk for developing breast cancer. General risk factors include gender and age. Being a woman puts you at risk, and as women age, their risk continues to increase. According to the Center for Disease Control, breast cancer risk increases with age. There are nonprofit groups, agencies, and various organizations that address breast cancer awareness as a year-long event, and not just during the month of October. This is understandable, as a cancer diagnosis has the ability to drastically change lives, Depending on the stage and aggressiveness of the cancer, your life could literally be flipped upside down. This is why it's important for women to do all they can to protect themselves and why it's important for us as men to support and help the women in any way possible with this matter. This cancer affects our wives, mothers, daughters, sisters, grandmothers, etc. Encouraging well women visits breast exams, and mammograms are at the forefront of prevention. Financial and emotional support are crucial. Even with the best insurance money can buy, if you get medical treatment in the United States, depending on the complexity of your ailment, your medical bills have the potential to quickly soar to the price of a small home. Speaking of supporting and encouraging women, in rare cases, men can develop chest cancer, Some may call it breast cancer. Men would need support from their wives, family, and friends as well during this time. Chest cancer in men is extremely rare. The percentage of chest cancer in men is less than 1%. This is for obvious reasons, as the anatomy between men and women are significantly different. Stroma is the tissue that makes up breasts in women and the chest in men. Women have a lot more of this tissue, along with lobules and ducts. The alveoli carry milk through ducts to the dark, large, round area of the female breast called the areola. Women have breasts, and cancer can develop anywhere in the breast tissue. However, the majority of breast cancer occurs in the ducts and lobules. So as you can see, women have breasts which are actual significant anatomical difference than in men. 
This gives them the precedence in the incidence of breast cancer cases. I mention that to say this. When I refer to breast cancer moving forward in the podcast, I'm referring to women. 250,000 cases of breast cancer are diagnosed in the United States each year, with about 43,000 women dying from the disease. That being said, there are currently about 4 million survivors of breast cancer in the United States. According to the World Health Organization, 2.3 million women were diagnosed worldwide, with 685,000 dying from it. They also state that there are almost 8 million women worldwide that are breast cancer survivors. Genetics Genetics play a significant role in a woman developing breast cancer. If a gene for breast cancer is in the family tree, there's a greater chance that a woman will develop it under no fault of her own. I just want to briefly describe two processes, mitosis and meiosis, to illustrate the idea of genetic variability. Gametes produce who we are through chromosomes and gene expression. Literally, the cards we are dealt are given to us during mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis makes the body cells, and meiosis makes the gametes, which are the sperm and the egg. You get 46 chromosomes, one set of 23, from both parents. During mitosis, chromosomes condense, and they come into alignment. The chromosomes form a single file line in the middle of the cell. Spindles on each side of the cell then pull the chromatids, which are half of the duplicated chromosome, to each side of the cell. The cytoplasm surrounding the cell splits in half, creating two new cells. With meiosis, chromosomes are also aligning, and this is where things like eye color, hair color, height, complexion, etc. are determined. Recombination is taking place and chromosomes are exchanging information with one another. The chromosomes are in the middle of the cell, but they're in pairs. Then they are pulled by spindles to opposite sides of the cell. Cytokinesis splits the cell in half, engulfing each nuclei, making two brand new cells. Soon after, the chromosomes reorganize. Now, the chromosomes will be in a single file line in the middle of the cell. Spindles, again, then pull the chromatids to each side. New nuclei will form, and cytokinesis will split the cell in half, creating four brand new cells. The new cells will all be different, which are the gametes, sperm, and the egg. A zygote forms, which is a fertilized egg, and it will divide many times over the next eight weeks to form a fetus. I didn't mean to get so deep into it. Uh, I forgot how much I love genetics. Um, By the way, these processes are way more in-depth than I just mentioned here. I I briefly mentioned them to illustrate the point of genetic variability when it comes to being predisposed to developing breast cancer. This is why your PCP will ask about your family history, so he or she can get a better idea of how to treat you as well as what to look out for in the future. Prevention. Prevention is the key component in avoiding breast cancer. It is vital that you give yourself a breast exam every now and again in the shower or bath to check for any unusual lump, discolorations, or bumps. It's also a good idea to have your boyfriend or husband look to see if they notice anything different or unusual. I say this because a lot of times some women may not notice uh, things in the mirror because as humans, we're all used to what we look like. So an extra set of eyes will be advantageous in helping you to stay on top of your care. That being said, during your annual with your PCP, you can get a breast exam and or an order for a mammogram. Also, during your annual Well Woman's Visit with your GYN, you can get a breast exam and or an order for a mammogram. I mentioned checking for breast cancer at both uh, an annual and a Well Woman's Visit. I'm just speaking in general, as this depends on who you see and how often you get tested, because 100% of insurance companies will not pay for a duplicate x-ray for a mammogram. In addition, 
Although the electromagnetic radiation of the X-ray does not emit a high dose of energy, it's not a good idea to expose yourself to unnecessary radiation. We all are already bombarded with radiation every day of our lives. In other cases, if you know that breast cancer runs in your family, you can opt for genetic testing. You can test for the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. As there is the propensity to inherit these genetic mutations from your family lineage and later on develop breast cancer. BRCA1 and BRCA2 are actually tumor suppressor genes that are supposed to hinder cancer and repair DNA. When there is an error or mutation in these genes, they fail to do their job and can even contribute to causing cancer. Inheriting just one of these genes that has been mutated will leave a woman open for, to developing breast cancer and other cancers, such as ovarian cancer. Some of you may remember uh, some years back when Angelina Jolie had a double mastectomy because she inherited uh, a mutated BRCA1 gene. I feel genetic testing is a fantastic tool, and I'm glad that science and medicine has developed to the point where women can use this tool to help determine their risks for developing breast cancer. The fuel we use in our bodies is a tremendous factor in developing cancer. As a woman, depending on your calorie usage and activity, age, and health, women should aim for approximately 1,200 to 1,500 calories per day. Not only will this allow you to maintain a healthy weight, but this will allow you to keep your BMI, body mass index, within normal range and keep the weight off, limiting your chances of developing breast cancer. There was an article published in CA, uh, a cancer journal for, for clinicians by Manuel, Morada, Valet, and others called Obesity and Adverse Breast Cancer Risk and Outcome, Mechanic Insights and Strategies for Intervention. They gathered large amounts of studies observing the significance in testing of obesity and the incidence of breast cancer. They determined that being overweight was a factor and was a risk factor for developing breast cancer among women. A diet consisting of lean meat like turkey, lamb, beef, chicken, tilapia, and salmon are ideal, and where you can get the majority of your protein. Make sure that these meats are lean and organic and that they're also non-GMO. Protein is important for building muscle, cellular operations, and fighting off infections. In juxtaposition, a diet high in fat, especially processed genetically modified meats, increases breast cancer risk. Avoid foods like conventional hot dogs, cold cuts, and any type of fast food. Fruits like apples, bananas, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, and kiwi, to name a few, are great for their antioxidant properties, vitamins, minerals, as well as their water content. Fruits typically work to lower oxidative stress, which in turn limits inflammation, which ultimately results in reducing cancer and tumor growth. Leafy greens such as kale, spinach, cabbage, leeks, collard greens, and celery are monumentally beneficial to the body. The vitamins and minerals benefit the body via immunity, vision, hair, skin, as well as cellular functions. The water and fiber content help in digestion and help you to feel full so you eat less. Avoid fruits and vegetables that are in the can. Not only are those foods genetically modified, unless specifically labeled organic, but canned products are usually lined with BPA or bisphenol phosphate A, which is used to help the food from spoiling, and it also helps to prevent the food from tasting like the metal can that they're in. The downside is this chemical is an endocrine disruptor, and it's also a carcinogen that can leach into the food, and this is how that chemical gets into your body. This chemical can mimic or hinder proteins in the body, giving rise to mutations and the development of breast cancer. Proper grains like brown rice, 
whole wheat pasta and whole wheat bread are very good for you as well. Brown rice and whole wheat pasta are much better for you than conventional rice and pasta. They are nutrient and vitamin rich, whereas conventional white rice and pasta may taste better, white rice and pasta are normally enriched because processing them causes them to lose so many vital nutrients. They are therefore enriched with vitamins and minerals. The problem here is that they are synthetic vitamins and minerals, which are not processed properly by the body as they are man-made. The same goes for whole grain bread as a superior choice over white bread. White bread is processed and refined, and although it tastes good, it's an empty, genetically modified carb. What I'm about to mention next, I found out a few weeks ago. L-cysteine is a non-essential amino acid. China is the largest producer of L-cysteine in the world. The majority of white bread and buns produced in the United States contain L-cysteine, which it gets from China. L-cysteine is made from human hair that is gathered from hair salons and barber shops, and it's taken and processed to be used as inbred in the United States. The reason L-cysteine is used is to reduce mixing and fermentation time of the dough. In addition, it makes the dough soft and chewy. So avoid the commercial white breads, bagels, and pizza crusts. If you make your own bread or go to a bakery and get it made fresh, you won't have to worry about L-cysteine. I want to thank you for supporting me by listening to the Living Healthy Podcast. My podcast is listed on many platforms, including Anchor, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and many, many others. Please follow me on Tumblr, X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and Rumble. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, please don't hesitate to ask. Also, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, please contact me at livinghealthylivinghealthy at gmail.com. In addition, please check out the Living Healthy Podcast Store. The link is in the description of the podcast. And now back to the show. Exercise is another form of prevention, as even moderate exercise at least 30 minutes a day can have a significant impact on reducing your chances for developing breast cancer. Exercise reduces inflammation, insulin resistance, and it helps to boost the immune system. When you go to the store, you can park in one of the last parking spots um, at the end of the, uh, the, the parking area. Um, from the store, and you can walk all the way into the store to get a few extra steps in. Walking in your neighborhood or at a local park can also do wonders. You can also jog, jump rope, do yoga, utilize light weight lifting, uh, cycle, swim, or use a treadmill. The type of exercise you choose will depend on your age as well as your health and fitness. There's a lot of pressure put on women to look a certain way in regard to beauty. That being said, all women want to look pretty and feel attractive. Unfortunately, the makeup that many women wear often contains potential carcinogens as well as endocrine disruptors. They have caused and have the propensity to cause breast cancer and other cancers in the body. The makeup that I'm referring to are blush, concealers, cosmetic powder, eyeshadow, lipstick, and makeup bases. Things are a lot better now than they used to be, as there are a lot of makeup companies that do not use known carcinogens, or they make a line of makeup that is cleaner and uses cleaner ingredients. The carcinogens I am referring to are arsenic, benzene, coal tar, ethylene oxide, formaldehyde, mercury, parabens, PFOS, P-phenylenediamine, RED3, and talc. 
The FDA regulates cosmetics in the United States, and some may be wondering, why does the FDA allow these poisonous chemicals into cosmetics? It has to do with the law, as food and medicine have to be proven to be safe before they're marketed and sold. This is not the same for cosmetics. In addition, not all ingredients are required to be listed, as is the case of perfume or soap. The term fragrance can be listed. What most people don't know is that the term fragrance can be used to disclose over 400 different ingredients. There can be 400 or more chemicals that make up the term fragrance. So makeup companies are left to do their own policing by in-house quality and safety testing. I'm not out to say that makeup companies are the bad guys. As I always say, 99% of companies want to deliver clean products that give you the desired result. That being said, there is a significant, significant link between carcinogens in makeup and breast cancer. As I mentioned earlier, um, there are makeup brands out there that have cleaner ingredients. The thing is, uh, the ingredients I listed earlier, write them down or make a document in your phone and keep a list of them when shopping or ordering online in order to avoid makeup with those particular chemicals. Moving on to hair care products, in particular, hair dye. Those first few gray hairs may prompt a young lady to go out and purchase a hair dye that closely resembles her natural color. Hair dye not only damages your hair, but it damages the root and follicle. In addition, there is a link between breast cancer and the chemicals that are used in hair dye. These chemicals can be absorbed through the skin and make their way into the bloodstream and then find their way into organs and tissue. With continued use over time, this can result in endocrine disruption and breast cancer. One such chemical is resorcinol. It is a coupling agent which helps to bind the hair dye to the hair. It is an endocrine disruptor and repeated use can damage the liver, kidneys, and cause breast cancer. There's an article published by NAH.gov called Permanent Hair Dye and Straighteners May Increase Breast Cancer Risk. They conducted a study with just under 48,000 women and discovered that women were 9% more likely to develop breast cancer than women who did not use hair dye. On top of that, they state that African American women who use dyes every 8 weeks or so were 60% more likely to develop breast cancer than white women who did. It may be hard to avoid dyeing your hair due to the pressure and stress that women are put under to look a certain way, but the alternative is exposing yourself to chemicals that can damage your DNA and open the door to cancer. There are healthy alternative ways to dye your hair, but they are not as long-lasting. So that is an option. The other options are wigs, hair weave, or just be natural and accept a little gray. You were beautiful when your hair wasn't gray, and you're still beautiful now that your hair is gray. It's all about how you feel about yourself. Perfumes smell great, and as humans, we associate enjoyable and pleasant experiences with smell. Some women want to smell nice just for themselves. Others want to smell nice in order to attract men. Whatever the case may be, perfumes have a deep-rooted history in mankind. The perfume industry is a $46 billion industry. Perfumes are heavily marketed, and it's no secret why the makeup and perfume counters are located so close to the entrance of the store. With free samples and the squirting um, or some puffs of perfume every few hours or so, the idea is to introduce women to a pleasant smell in order to have them buy it. While perfume is a great thing to have, the downside, as I mentioned earlier, lies in the ingredients. The ingredients simply listed as perfume can contain over 400 different chemicals that are not required to be listed. Most of them, but not all, are potential carcinogens. The International Fragrance Association is a group of individuals who monitor the middle ground between the fragrance industry and safety for consumers. 
According to the International Fragrance Association, there are over 3,000 chemicals that are used by the fragrance industry. Independent studies and research has linked a multitude of those chemicals to endocrine disruption and breast cancer. According to BreastCancerPartners.org, many of those same chemicals have been flagged as carcinogens under California's Proposition 65 Act. If you're interested, I have posted a link to the International Fragrance Association listing the chemicals that are used as fragrance. There are all-natural and non-toxic perfumes that you can buy. In addition, you can make your own perfume. I have included some links on natural non-toxic perfumes as well as a link to making your own perfume in the description of the podcast. The same goes for shampoos and deodorants. Conventional ones contain phthalates, parabens, and fragrance. I already covered fragrance, but shampoos and deodorants also contain phthalates and parabens. They have been long associated with breast cancer. It is vital to avoid these by getting organic or all-natural alternatives. If they are not organic and say all-natural, make sure to look at the ingredient list for any questionable chemicals. Also, when getting deodorant, make sure to get deodorant and not antiperspirant. It is human to sweat and to, you know, on occasion, smell. Aluminum silicate is used in antiperspirants to clog the sweat glands. Aside from the risk of breast cancer from parabens and phthalates, aluminum has been linked to dementia as well as Alzheimer's disease. I touched on the types of foods to eat and mentioned some to avoid. The biggest thing is to avoid any and all processed food. This includes fast food burgers and fries. The major fast food chains in America all get their meat from China. The thing is, the the more people or countries involved in processing or preparing food, the more pathogens that have potential to get into the food. Many animals are raised in the U.S. and then they're sent to China to be slaughtered and prepped. Then nitrates and preservatives are used to help keep the foods from spoiling. Those same nitrates and preservatives are known to cause breast cancer. Microwave popcorn is another thing to avoid. The bag is lined with PFAS, which prevents the grease from leaking through the bag when cooking in the microwave. The downside is that these polyfluoral alkyl substances are linked to a plethora of health ailments, which include breast cancer. Don't hate me for this one, but pizza is another thing to avoid. You can make your own pizza with organic flour, organic cheese, and organic sauce. The cheese used in conventional are more or less treated with RBST. RBST is a bovine hormone used by manufacturers to increase milk production. Over time, continued exposure of this chemical building up in the body will increase a woman's chance of developing breast cancer. In addition, PFAS, which I mentioned earlier, are also used in pizza boxes to help fight grease from leaking through the box. It should go without saying to not smoke and to avoid secondhand smoke if you can. Avoid using conventional pesticides as well. There are many do-it-yourself pesticides that you can use for your home and outside your home to keep pests away. All of these conventional methods contain neurotoxins and endocrine disruptors, and they are linked to cancer. You can get a jug of white vinegar and grate some orange peel, and then let them soak in the jug of vinegar. You can use that to spray inside as well as outside your home to get rid of bugs and for overall pest control. You'll have to spray it a little more often, but at least you will not be exposed to dangerous chemicals. The same goes for your garden. You can use the suggestion I just mentioned to help control pests there. But when it comes to weeds, instead of using conventional weed killers, which are full of carcinogens, you can use a spray bottle with dish soap, salt, and vinegar. As I previously mentioned, you may have to spray a little more often to kill the weeds and crabgrass, 
but at least you will not be exposed to chemicals that can result in you developing breast cancer. That's going to do it for episode 11 of season 3 of the Living Healthy Podcast. I hope you found this podcast informative, beneficial, and I hope that I have motivated you to make the decision that you'd like to make. Thank you for your support. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time. Living healthy creates a better you.